Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hello everyone, great to be back as always. In this video I have for you game one of a best of three between Kurz and Onord in the semi-finals of season eight of the Star Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Siena and on our left in the red team playing on the uh, allied side we have Kurs using the 26th Guards Rifles and the Maverick Deployment Type. And on our right in the blue, we have Onord using the 4th Falchion Jaeger and the Maverick Deployment Type on the Axis side. So it is a Allied versus Axis matchup. Oh Yay! I feel the smiles happening already. And I want to remind everyone, hit that like button, subscribe. It really helps our channels out a bunch. Yeah, so what do you think about these divisions? These are two really strong divisions, actually. Um, fourth Walsh from Year often gets banned. I'm seeing 26th get banned a little more than it used to be. I actually really like 26th. This is one of, if not my favorite, allied divisions these days. Uh, it just it's, it's really efficient. It's got all the tools you need. It really doesn't have any like gross weaknesses other than the AA. The AA is very limited, but what you get is good, so it's like... Not the worst AA I've ever seen, but it is rough. Uh, Fourth Falsham Jaeger is really strong as well. The infantry are absolutely absurd. Um, you do have some pretty good, you know, armored units and stuff that can get the job done. It's not a lot, but you you know enough to get the get the work done. It's really the infantry that carry this division, uh, and the support factors around that. Some light artillery that's really strong. Um, yeah, Siano's can be a rough map for the blue side here, so Nord's definitely on the back foot. This whole valley thing is really kind of crap uh, for that player. It's not that it's certainly not that you can't win from that side. It's just it is an uphill battle if you're on that side, and uh, he's gonna have to work through that. And and uh, once again, they're both on Maverick. Uh, you, you, it's just hard to be balanced these days because your opponent comes into C phase with 450 more points than you. So if you trade even, you're down 450 points, and that's hard to overcome. Oh, some beautiful information. Um, yeah, with the 26th, it's funny because it used to be really strong because of the IS-1, but then when the range nerf came out, it reduced the range of the IS-1, so it's not as strong now. But it's still a pretty decent unit for taking on Panthers if you can get it into range. So it'd be interesting to see if that pops out. Um, but let's have a quick look at what's going down. Because on the top side, we have a couple Maxims there and the SG-43. So he's got cards of Maxims and SGs in his support tab, plus the Okunema Chiki. Got the PTRS, he's got the guards, he's got the T34 and a 45mm AT gun. Further down, we're going to be seeing PTRS, 45mm, uh, there's SG and the Stemaviki Rock. So Stemaviki Rock's awesome squads for sure, with the uh, flamers and submachine guns. Then we got some more flamers further down, the Oknemachiki with the PTRS sniper and the ISU 152 coming out from the start to cover the open ground. And then we got some snipers, PTRS, another flamer, two more. MGs on the bottom side with the Stomaviki and the 45. So it looks like he's just going for the sort of MGs to control the open range and then has like specialist close range infantry that he's going to try and push up. Yeah, that's what I do love about these Russian Strelki divisions. You just get so many troops at the beginning. They're all so cheap. You just have hundreds of them on this map. Yeah, let's have a quick look at Onord's units. We've got a couple of flamers on the top side. He's got some of these Palakadatisti uh, with the there we go. With the Falchimega, the Panzerstreck, and then we've got the Flammenwerfers, we've got some Pala del Salto with the Falchimega and then the Nag and a Pac-41 Gerlich. There's a HG-111 coming out the start for Recon. We've got the Flammenwerfer Scharfschützer and the MG-42 with a Stug M43 supporting that in the center. That's the port gun with a really low rate of fire. And we've got the MG-42, Pac-41 and some more of these Italian troops on the bottom side. Got, uh, we're going to have to keep an eye out on these engagements as they reach the 50-50. Who's going to really stop each other getting into the town? I feel like Onord's going to have a bit of trouble as Kerr's infantry is going to find its way to the crossroads sooner. Well, and of course you have the PTRS rush. That's an absolute necessity in every Russian division. you got a PTRS rush. Yeah, the PTRS did take out the motorcycle there, so that was a good start for him. Yeah, it did not do as much damage as it often does. Uh, PTRS rush is just... They're so disruptive. They're so annoying. <laughs> they really are. Oh, Ooh, in the center the here, side. a lot of things uh, pinned down here and up north. Oh, looks like Onord is just coming out on the back end of a lot of these uh, engagements here. 
Oh, the MGs. Oh, they're pinning down everything. But the flames, I think, was what stopped the transports there. They were trying to rush all the way through to those infantry on that top side. On the bottom, uh, Kurz was rushing forwards with a couple of motorcycles and they got taken out as a sniper squad and I think a flamer squad that got killed before they could even unload because of all of the uh, infantry there with their submachine guns absolutely ripping shreds. But that, oh, the ISU just smacking the MG42 in the open. It looks like Own Nord is not going to be getting anywhere near the town on the bottom side for the time being. Uh, meanwhile, Own Nord is going to be trying to make ground, however, into the top side town. As is Pala del Salto trying to engage Stomaviki, but those Stomaviki so deadly chunk that Falschmiega squad in half in just a second. Yeah, that double flamer is really quite strong. The cool thing about 26 is they have Strafniki and the Stomaviki rocks, which are two of probably the best Russian infantry units you can get. So having both in one division is really quite strong. We have a big bomber coming in here. I don't, I'm not even going to, the Alcione. Alcion, yeah. <laughs> Alcione coming in here. I just realized I did say that wrong earlier. It's, it's Pera Chatudisti, is, I think is the correct way to say it. Yeah, the C is like a... Is a CH sound in a tap. CH, yeah, exactly. Nice bombing strike onto the Stimoviki there, though. Uh, just clean that up means that the Pelo de Salto do not have to face that directly, and Kurs going to have to replace that with a Gavali DP there as well. Uh, just try and get back into that town. But nice control for Onord on that top side. Town is slowly taking ground back on the very top side there but it's going to be struggling on the bottom side for the time being the garlic here uh taking some good hits at this t34 i do not use these myself I, I hate the fact they only do four damage so it takes three hits to kill stuff but they do have a good rate of fire and they penetrate they have a very high penetration yeah it actually bounced though once which was quite amusing <laughs> Let's take it down eventually the parasalt killed the Sturmaviki rocks in the transport that's a huge kill oh. huge nice. kill very, very big because it's not going to allow him to get another squad back in that town anytime soon. Like, he is bringing another one in, but that will probably not be able to get in range of the Palo de Salto with its submachine guns and uh, and the flamers before the Palo de Salto kill it. So, that's due to the Berettas having that, having that 150 meter range advantage on those submachine guns. These Paracha Dudisti just put out so much more damage than it looks like they should. It's it's very uh, it's very surprising based on their stats how much damage they put out. Yeah, it is still like a double MG infantry squad at the end of the day. Um, it's kind of like uh, the Bren, but I think it does more damage. I think uh, the, Bren the Bren is just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> These Stimaviki, if they get in range of the Palo de Salto, are going to do a lot of damage. Honord knows it. He's going to be pulling back from that immediately. ISU-152 uh, going for the shot onto the Palo, but the uh, Alteon uh, going to miss its bombing strike completely. Yeah, in the center, in the center town, the I think the MG-42 took out the Stimaviki rocks in the transport again. So once oh, again, it did not come out. Tragic. 37 mil stopping that Yak 9B. That's pretty big because that would have done a ton of damage so far. Up north, Kurz doesn't really have anything left. If he can't catch these infantry out in the open, he's actually going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I know it's done a really good job of uh, breaking down this top side of the map after what looked like a pretty disastrous start there. But he managed to save those three units of infantry and then use them to work his way back into that top side. Uh, the Alcione manages to shoot down the uh, Yak 9. With the help of the AI, that's or of the AA, the AS forty two twenty mil and the Nag there, and then the Nag stopping another Yak nine beach bombing strike as well, into the town. Onord invested quite heavily into his AA early, and it's starting to really pay off. Yeah, it has stopped. I think four Yak bombing strikes, and those Yaks are really good. Like it's a heavy bomb load; they'll kill anything they hit. And the reason is this 37 mil is the Flak 43, which is so significantly better than the Flak Flak 36. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. Yep. So this town well under control for a Nord on the top side. He's moving up Pack 41 Gerlich. He's moving up the MG42. And yeah, losing those two squads of Stomaviki in transports is really, really detrimental to his efforts getting back into that town. He's now got these three Chernos, which are pretty much just holding the line for the time being, but they will get mown down very quickly by MG42s and Falsham Jaegers. Uh, more infantry going to be committed to the top side as well, as though Nord is still making ground there. Going to get on top of that SG-43 soon. 
and if he moves forward just a little bit longer, he can get his Berettas on target there and take it out. He'll probably take it out just fine where he's at. Uh, down south, though, the reason I think Onard's doing so well is because he really has not committed a lot more to the south. Uh, Kurz continues to make progress there. Uh, now he doesn't have a huge presence, but uh, Onord has given up a lot of territory to make that gain up north. He has this, like, Panther A just sitting back near the spawn for the time being, though, which is a little strange. I feel like maybe he's not trying to reveal it early or something. Maybe. I, I don't know. Feels maybe like he a just misclick. forgot about it. Yeah, it feels yeah. like a misclick. <laughs> maybe he just forgot about it. Yeah. The only other reason I could I could say he would leave it there out of line of sight is in case of the Yak-9s that come in with the cluster, because that's something that the 26th has. It's one thing to leave it out of line of sight. It's another thing to leave it at your spawn. Yeah, true. But the Panther Ray there would be very useful to kill the ISU. Yeah, that's probably his best chance. He doesn't actually have a ton of other AT options to kill this ISU 152. Focke Wolf coming in for a bombing strike, probably on this Maxim and Gavardi DP here. And once he takes those out, there all those machine guns are gone, and he's down to basically just Chernos and just Chernos really. Yeah, so it kind of misses the mark a little bit, but it does pin them both down. So will allow the infantry squad there to move forwards and start chipping down the enemy. Uh, MG versus Sniper on the top side town. Uh, with the MG42 being low, that Sniper could get lucky and kill it. But the Palo de Salto moving up there and chunking Chernos. Oh, that's nasty. Well, and the Falsch Fals Amiga there too. It's easy to forget. Yeah. You know, they got nerfed and they don't get used a ton anymore. But, like, they are disgustingly good. It looks like this Yak-9B might go down to... Nope, it survives. Yeah, hey, G111 on the bottom side, just going to probably be looking for strikes for the Focke Wolves. But 14 to 10 for Ono, it's actually pretty nice considering the situation on the bottom side. Well, and, and this is where this whole map thing does come into play. Like, look how much Onord has, and he still is barely squeaking a 15-9, and that's why this map is just kind of challenging from his side. Again, it's not he's obviously winning, but it does, it takes a little more effort to pick up that 15-9. Two bombers coming in. He's obviously been steadily building up his air force this whole time. Looks like they're going for that ISU, or they're going for the sniper. Oh, nope. ISU-152 taking a hit. Panthers, he finally remembered it, it looks like. Yep, he's brought it forwards. It's looking for the shot onto the ISU. The uh, bomber coming in there, bit heavy bomber, looking for the hits onto the ISU as well after the Fock Wolf already hit it once. And it's not going to get the kill this time around, but definitely going to be weakening that. It's going to be easy one shot now for the Panther if it ever gets on target. And that's what he needs because, of course, the ISU one shots his Panther if it, <laughs> if it gets there. Yeah, the likelihood with the <laughs> with the accuracy is quite low, but the Yak-9 there... Finally gets a bombing side. strike off. Does indeed, but going to take a lot of damage from the 37 as it kind of moved directly towards it after the bombing strike. Well, one Italian man holding the line against five Chernos, and he does win the battle. Those Ferretas, he's, he's too busy firing three weapons at the same time. <laughs> Good old Rambo. <laughs> that was that was impressive that he lost that. <laughs> the journo is just so bad these days. <laughs> they are. Those para assaults up north too, poking out, using their 150 meter range to keep those Sturmavikis out of the woods, which is where he needs them to be. Uh, T-34E coming in too, but uh, we're back to a 12-12, but I, I really got to save you. I feel like Curse is on the back foot right now. Yeah, he's definitely lost like way more units at this point, and all of his efforts to push in back into this top side so far have been for nothing. Like, this Palo de Salto is just waiting to clean up these Cherno squads. It's just it's going to be this poor one Cherno just walks up. Oh, ah. he's dead. <laughs> and the next one. He did take a man with him, though, surprisingly. Down south, uh, a recon car rush here, basically, is clearing out some of Kerr's troops in the center. Uh, he really can't move up too aggressively because of this Panther A just covering off the road here. I'll see if this Cherno gets in. Oh, comes out before. But even with this, the two SPWs and then the uh, the AS-20 mil, this thing's actually, like, really good. It, it dies easy, it's fragile, but, man, it pumps out some damage. Yeah, the AS-20 is amazing because it has the Predator, it has the 20 mil as well. And this 20 mil acts as fantastic AA. <laughs> so it's just it's just an all-round fantastic unit. Oh, nice bombing strike onto Stamaviki there. Means that Onord doesn't have to commit his Palo de Salto to kill that. 
and yeah, it's really good. He hopped out a little too early out of that building so that the plane did correctly target the infantry instead of like the building itself. Kurz has brought up the SG-85 on the bottom side to try and kill the panther. Uh, but he's going to need to get into this light cover, but he can't do it while all of the auto cannons are there. Yeah, one thing for newer players to know, if you're if your guys are in a building they're getting bombed, if you wait for the plane to drop the bombs and then leave the building, the bombs will hit the building and you'll generally dodge the bombing strike. Yeah. Falschemager's no, down no. south versus the Gavardia DP here. This should be an easy win. Oh, well, now there's bombs. And there you <laughs> it would have been yeah, an easy win. It was yeah, Johnny. <laughs> Definitely doing the job there. It was winning anyway, but yeah, that, that, uh, that just sped it up a lot. 45 mil moving up to try to take out these SPWs. That's definitely a good weapon against them, but if they all, if he spots too many at a time, it could be problematic for that 45 mil. You have to be super careful with line of sight here. Um, and the way that uh, Nord's position these is just annoying because the SU-85 wants to sneak forwards in the light cover so it can fire off at the Panther if it gets too close. But at the same time, if that reveals itself, Nord could easily rush it and then get side shots and that thing goes down very quickly. It's paper thin on the side at close range. And now there's a Tiger E here in the center. It's really cool seeing Onord using some of this heavy armor that fourth Falschemaker has. You know, a lot of people hate on these heavy tanks, you know, Tigers, Panthers, the not super heavies basically. Personally, I'm a big fan of them and they can, against something like 26, they can actually do really, really well. Yeah, 26 definitely lacks uh, heavier armor until like the late game, I think. They get, like, the KV-85s, don't they? The KV-85s are not uh, locked. I think if they are locked, it's only to B. B to B, C. Like, but no, I, yeah. think, I think you can get them anytime. I'm not sure, but they definitely are going to struggle against a Tiger. Cause yeah, you'd need to get closer range yeah. in order to deal with it. Now, these Strafniki up north, these will do some damage. Uh, now, the Falschmager in heavy cover versus light cover, they might do okay. But these Perachadudisti probably won't do as well. Here we see the Falschmagers, they're going in. Can they? The main thing will be pinning them down, but they got absolutely shredded there. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, six, it's six machine guns when you really think about it. That's a lot. Yeah. Para assaults poking their head out for not a very good reason because they're not close enough. This 37 mil continuing to just hold back the Air Force. They, they are, the, the Flak 43 is so good. So, so good. One thing that I have noticed is, like, over time, it feels like Kurz has started to build up a lot more forces than Onord on this top side. Whilst Onord has started to, like, invest a lot more into the bottom. So you can see that he's brought in the uh, Para de Salto there, the uh, Para Chatotisti, and the uh, Fashimiega squads, which is a reasonable amount of points to spend on infantry. And then he's got the two, like, the Para and the Fashimiega moving up now on that bottom side as well. And he's gonna slowly get control if uh, Kurz is not too careful, but this Yak-9 free to bomb this Fauschenjäger and will take it out, so very nice strike. On the top side, Pana's actually managing to pin down one of the Strafs. Fokor's gonna come in and help pin down a second. Nice shot there from the Tiger, takes out the T-34 as well. Lovely stuff. Stug M42 coming in to join the fray. This thing's actually really nice. One of my more uh, interesting and favourite tanks, honestly, at the moment. The M42 is good fun because it's it's 12 round per minute rate of fire. It can get a lot of HG damage down very quickly. Its heat round is actually relatively reliable at close range for taking out medium armour. Like, I actually have pretty good fan of them. Oh yeah, they're very good. I mean, they are extremely cost efficient for only 40 points. They kill things that they sh they have no bu business killing at all. Uh, very often, actually, I find. Um, they Yeah, no, they're very good. They don't have a machine gun, though. That is one thing. They are machine gunless. Yeah. But they're kind of like, uh, like an IG on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Is, uh, yeah, so Nord's infantry are getting broken down here. It, going up against all these guys in the cover is definitely not the best strategy, generally speaking. Uh, and I will say, Nord's had some really poor bombing strikes. Uh, he, he's, like, missed several times completely on his bomb. He did up north earlier, too, again. It's, it's kind of odd to see him miss those so blatantly. 
37 yep. mil saves his Tiger from that Yak 9B. But And the other thing is, too, now he knows it's there, so he probably will never let his heavy armor stray away. I also just noticed down south we have an elephant in. An elephant. Yep. I do not it take is. this personally, but <laughs> it's pretty fun. And is on the field. Maybe a little bit of a waste of points at the moment, because there's not really much happening. Like, the panther, like, is still alive, so... I don't really feel like there's a massive need for that elephant on the bottom side, unless like he's planning to get full control over the town, and then, you know, he can cover that bottom side pretty much indefinitely with all his heavy armor. Uh, so that could be a way that he just is deciding that he wants to win this battle whilst kind of just conceding the top side back to Kurz. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I, my thought process would be probably that Anord's playing more for the long game. Uh, he's just expecting this Mav on Mav mirror to kind of go long. Because, you know, he's yeah. only got a 1311, so it's not like anyone's bleeding points really fast or anything. So he, he might just be trying to get the most out of his Mav income. Up up north, the Stug 42 does go down to the KV-1. Yeah. That is not a great matchup for him. Well, the HE-111 coming under quite a lot of fire from the double M-15 as it flies straight towards it while his recon aircraft finally go down. Because that was providing a lot of information on this bottom side, definitely opened up a lot for these bombing strikes. And you can see every time one of these HE-111s coming out, so are the bombers in order to get these attacks off. And I think the main thing these HE-111s are looking for now is what is capturing the town. Because he probably doesn't want to like commit an actual infantry squad to move through the town right now. He just wants to kind of delete what's in the town and then cover it from a distance. Yeah, and I'm not sure what he's doing with his bombers right now. He's just kind of randomly flying over. So he tried to use the Alchon to distract the M15s and bring the Focke-Wulf in from the side and then like he was trying to bomb the M15 directly with the Focke-Wulf bombers but the trouble was with that move is that he moved the Focke-Wulf too close before he right clicked the M15 so it tried to like do a loop before it came back with the bombing strike yeah um, that was that was unfortunate cost him the bomber he did get a 172 mil artillery yeah he's definitely playing for the long game here bringing in heavy artillery like this bringing that elephant uh yeah, he, he's Ornord's planning to dig in and, and hold this game long because you can see Kurz is building up mostly just direct combat ground troops while Ornord is building up a lot more backline, long range, farther stuff. There's now a Tiger E down south as well. Like, he does not want Kurz getting into this south anymore. Yep, and he's also brought in the 88 there as well. <laughs> like, that is some serious support coming in for this bottom side engagement. Um, Fashmegas and Pada Chadatisti. Doing okay. Uh, it's top side. They are keeping them at bay, I would say. Like, not necessarily winning, but it's, he's definitely slowed down what is quite a lot of forces. And with these Stimoviki, they only have the DT that they can use at range. They're kind of useless otherwise. Yeah, and he yeah he has really actually broken down a lot of the troops up there. If you zoom in, most of them are, like, damaged or hurt. The Strafniki just died. Gavardi is going to get pinned here. I mean... Falschemagers are Falschemagers. <laughs> if you're there in green cover and you're not, you're gonna get shredded. And it looks like he's finally yeah. moving into the town down south with the Falschemagers. Against the Ognemachiki, that they should kill them, but I, I you know, flamers, two-man flamer squads always surprise you. I think the thing is, it's gonna just come down to micro. If Kaz can like use the two squads to fire at one squad at the same time, then he could probably pin them and, and like surrender both squads. But the bomber. Yeah. Oh, he's going to just delete them. Okay, that works too. The 172 yep. <laughs> supplying some uh, fire up north there. We're going to start to see that effect taking place. Uh, 26 doesn't have a ton of artillery either. I guess that would be another one of its weaknesses. It's not, it doesn't have zero, but it certainly doesn't have anything big like a, like a 150 or anything like that. It has the very big ones. It's got the 203 and the 280 mil. Right, yes, yes, yeah. yes. The massive motorized artillery. <laughs> yeah, I find those things to be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> they can be pretty good with uh, radio, but yeah, the, the trouble is is that when they get counter battered, if they just take like one direct hit, they die. And it's not like the one the normal the normal artillery that has like ten men, and then like if a squad if a shot in lands nearby, they can usually take two or three hits before they actually get fully destroyed. Yeah, it's definitely rough using them. The one seventy two is is a very good artillery piece. I forget does this fire more than three? It's got the uh, no, it's a three round a minute one. 
and he's yeah. also got some he, he's also got radar everywhere with these SPWs uh, fourth can really zoom there they can really target their artillery well yep and even the AS4220 mils as well have <laughs> radio he's got this Falchion Fjodo with the radio the Panther's got the radio <laughs> it's a lot of radio it's hanging out <laughs> tons of radio now we do see a 122 millimeter off map coming in on here is that the no it's not the rocket that's one the I don't one. think that's the, just it's the, the small one the normal small one it will still be effective at pinning down these Falsham Jaegers if he's having so much trouble dislodging. I think that his plan here is just to try and yeah, pin them and break through on this top side to take back some ground. But ultimately, he's like even if he takes back both those flags on the top side, I guess it's going to be like 12 to 12, right? So it would just stop the game, but it's not going to be in a winning position anytime soon. Yeah, and I just, I don't... I don't know with this overwhelming amount of heavy armor. Tiger's taking on the SU-85 and sight down. I, I don't like SU-85s. Let me just put that out there right away. I find they I horribly underperform. It just died. <laughs> <laughs> My, I'm being yeah. I'm being vindicated here because this they're sucking versus this Tiger. The issue is range there. Like, it's, it's the Tiger and the Panther uh, engaging at their ideal range. Like, the SU-85 in this situation wants to be at, like, under 1,500 meters, so it can use its APCR, and then it can it can really slap these tigers and panthers about with its decent rate of fire, especially on high veterancy. Yeah, I think the issue is whenever you bring them in, you're often trying to use them to kill something like a tiger or a panther because that's the only tool in your Soviet division that you have to kill those. And so check on the top side. Yeah, tiger versus SU-85 here. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Got a bailed out. That's not fair. That's unfair. <laughs> Lucky crit. <laughs> but yeah, basically it takes like three shots APCR to take out one of these heavy tanks anyway. Uh, so, and it would take like, you know, two shots on the main gun. But yeah, nice, nice kill, I think, onto the Tigers with those SU-85s. It just needs to be a lot closer up. Yeah, that was caster curse right there. Just as I say, they suck, and then they kill that tiger. Just, like, <laughs> on cue. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> At least it's not affecting me this time. It's affecting you. <laughs> Bunch of baloney. I still got my point oh. across. The tiger killed two of them down south. Uh, 172 oh, trying to cover this false... The, he sent two false makers in which... I'm always hesitant to send super expensive infantry like that just barreling forward, but this 172 is just carving up these infantry. So accurate. Another plane goes down up north. I don't know whose it was. I... It was the Veltrovo Nord. His fighter. He's throwing he's throwing some planes away, I will say that. Well, he's trying to get these M15s out the way. He has been kind of like slowly targeting them with the artillery, but he's kind of like veered away from doing that now and has started to use it to try and chip the infantry of Kurs instead so that his uh, infantry have a better time. But uh, that's Strafnik. He's still managing to catch out one of the Fashion Jaeger there. That is not a good engagement. Uh, 15 men in green cover versus the limited men in the uh, Fashion Jaeger. But here comes an Andrusha. Oh, nice first rocket there, straight onto the target. Pack 40 goes down. Uh, might take out the Schaffschutz as well. I'm surprised Kurz is letting this fire all of its rockets, though, if I'm completely honest. Yeah, that might be a micro mistake. I mean, this is what he does need to do. He definitely needs to start countering on Nord's artillery and stuff with his own. Uh, and 26 does have Andrusha's, which are great. I mean, they're the same as Nebelor for 300s, basically, and those are awesome. So, uh, yep. yeah, kind of a waste, though, supply-wise and stuff, because now you got to wait for that thing to reload, which will take forever. Uh, he doesn't even have the supply out right now. There it is. Uh, I, I do, I mean, Curse has a good position up north. It's He's definitely, an, I mean, he's got good position down south. He just has no way of getting through this heavy armor. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's got, like, the uh, advantage in the north at the moment, but that's, are these two Fashimega that are coming in, are just going to replace the ones that he just just lost and then curse doesn't really have the infantry to support another push like yeah he's got his own chernos and guards coming in but they're not no match for the fashion maker that nord's putting his points into so every time he's going to need like two squads to kill probably one of these fashion maker squads and he just doesn't really have the numbers on that very top side and know nord's kept this like really strong position covered by aa just below this town here and, and it's worked out really well for him so far yeah, this is interesting. I, I I know I've never done this, and I don't see many people do this, but it's definitely a 
a more interesting option than holding the town, which most people do. You know, you kind of like try to dig in in the town. But this actually gives you a lot more cover and a lot more protection because the town dies. You know, the buildings go down and you can't hide in them anymore. And this kind of, you know, you can't destroy the forest. It looks like I think these two 37 mils will take this Yak 9B down, I would think. It would help the 20 as well from the AS 42. Should go down. If it doesn't, he's very lucky. <laughs> this thing is tanking. All right, there we go. I was like, wow. <laughs> It's because I said yeah. it. I know it's because I said it. <laughs> Yak 9B coming in for a bombing strike as well. Gonna go straight towards some A8. It's gonna take some big hits. May go down too. It's already smoking. It might. Yeah. Just some nice accurate shots from the nag. That's all it will take. And there it goes. Yeah. That's a that's a lot of Air Force lost out of uh, out of Kurs there. He is pushing this T thirty four E up, and it about now a Gerlich though is moving into position right now. Uh, there's one up yeah, north the too. Yak nine uh, B clusters are really not cheap. No, <laughs> they are, are hundred forty points. Yeah. Yeah. Which means he's Gerlich. not getting another anytime soon because that's two ticks of income, and he needs that for the ground right now. The garlic's in a perfect position here. Oh, and the first shot crit hammer explosion. <laughs> that is just gross. I will say personally, yeah. that's one thing I definitely underestimate is how often you do get crits with an APCR weapon. You know, I don't use the garlic's because I'm like, I hate the fact it takes three shots to kill something, but then you do get... And there's oh, another one. Oh, my God. Explosion. Oh, <laughs> And then the crew that's panic so as well. Bad. What is going on there? That wow. Is so unfortunate that is a hero. <laughs> Holy crap. I would be fuming. <laughs> I would be absolutely <laughs> fuming. Now we have the infantry push to follow it up, but they got machine guns onto the Andalusia. Oh no. Up north, the pack 40 got a crew kill on the KV-1 in the first hit too. Oh my goodness. And Kurt <laughs> says, that's exact. That's what I would do. <laughs> be raging. <laughs> Oh, no. Just a rage quit, right? Yeah, there. that was a rage quit. There's no doubt about it. I think, you know, it's 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 a warranted one because after that sort of situation, like there wasn't he wasn't anywhere close to coming back. So yeah, fair enough. You know, you surrender at that point anyway, but like the way it happened was just brutal. That was three, I think three armored units in a span of a minute that all got critted. Immediate death. Yeah. yeah, that oh I feel for him on that one. I really feel for him there. Uh looking at the KD here though, we we can see why. Uh you know, Onord with 2365 versus Kurz with 1550 in that KD. Um and you could feel it on the field for sure. Um Kurz made some really good pushes early and just wasn't able to really capitalize on them. He wasn't able to build those up. He wasn't able to hold them and things just against a Nord. A Nord's just so good at breaking down those kind of things. He's so methodical. Yeah. He's he's just so methodical in his play. It's just yeah. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes and it makes it hard to to win. Yes, yeah, so a 2365 kills, 1550 losses for a Nord and uh, obviously vice versa for cares. Big, big advantage in kills at the end for a Nord, but a lot of that did come in that last minute, which is <laughs> pretty incredible. Um, nice ISU support at the start definitely helped him control the town for a large period of that game, and then, of course, the heavy armor came in, kind of forced that off, allowed a Nord to get back in. Um, nice use of uh, the... Uh, long range artillery, I think, from a Nord as well to on that bottom side to kind of dislodge units on that bottom side. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the actual kills, I mean, Kurz didn't really have many standout units. He had a Strafniki that did very well, and that was about it. Like honestly, yeah. that that's about it. The ISU did got some kills, but nothing of like high value really. And if you go over to a Nord's, I mean, right off the bat, we have Falschmeiger's killing several units. We have. Perachadudisti killing several units, Parasalt killing several units. You know, this these are the kind of like trades you really can't keep up. A pack 40 killing those a Strafniki, a Sturmabiki, and a KV1. That's that's a that's a lot of points you're losing there. Um, you know, from that. And 
those kind of trades, they add up in a hurry and it gets hard. It gets very, very hard to catch back up. Yeah. So the main thing is obviously the Stemoviki rocks uh, should be the standout units on the side of the 26th. They should be the ones getting multiple kills. Um, but most of them were like killed before they even unloaded. And the ones that were there got bombed. Um, so I think Onor knew what he wanted to do when he was dealing with those units and he executed it very well. Uh, of course, it kind of comes down a bit to Kurz as well, being a bit careless with those units in their transports, considering how important that they can be. Um, and yeah, like the Strafs are the other ones, right? And we did see one of the Strafs do pretty well there. So unfortunate for Kurz. Yeah, I, I, I do think this game he got, he just got outplayed. You know, sometimes it does happen. Um, you know, these high level players go against each other and, and sometimes, you know, I, I know personally that you just don't play up to the level you're used to playing. And, uh, you know, it happens. It, it happens. A good game to both of them, but I think Onor just kind of played better this game. Yep. So we'll leave it there then. Uh, that is game one of a best of three. So we'll be moving on to game two of Kurz versus Onor in the next one. So look forward to that. Yep, and the That's winner of this now. this winner of this match goes and plays Gonzo, so it should be very exciting. Yeah. So yeah, so. hit that like button, guys. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,